A recent study showed that over 90% of high-end and luxury container homes were built for just under $15,000. Furthermore, whenever polled, building and safety officials all agreed that permitting a container home was super easy. Oh boy. Uh, well obviously I'm kidding. I can already feel the comments coming. There are two kinds of people watching this video right now. The people that are gonna hate me and the people that are gonna be very thankful that I'm shedding light on the idea of building a container home. Before I really dive into this, I do wanna say that on three separate occasions, I've gotten very, very close to actually pulling the trigger and building a container home myself. And for various reasons, it never worked out. One of those reasons being that I got scammed by a container home company and then sued by them for a million dollars for leaving a bad review, which I've almost made a video on this topic, but my attorney advised me to not poke the bear. Getting back on track here, the reason I wanted to make this video today was because we've all been there. We've all thought about buying a $2,000 container and then turning it into a luxury high-end container home that you could then live in super cheaply or make a bunch of money on Airbnb with. And back when I was consulting for short-term rentals, I had a lot of clients that would say, hey Rob, like there's this three acre parcel that I found out in the middle of nowhere, and guess what? It already has a 40 foot container on it, so I can build a container home, right? Eh. Not really. So today I wanna to talk about the top misconceptions that come along with building a container home and things that you should really consider if this is a project that you actually want to endure. And life pro tip, you're gonna to wanna to stick around until the very end of the video because I'll actually be chatting with the shipping container home expert. So one really, really big consideration that I want you to keep in mind when going down the shipping container rabbit hole, as many of us have, is that it's trendy. All right, and so that's not necessarily a bad thing because you know if it's trendy, that means it's in right now, it's hot, it's fresh, everybody wants it. But you have to keep in mind that whenever you're designing something or whenever you're building something, you wanna to try to make that house or style feel as timeless as possible. Just think about all the different times in your life when you thought a certain style or interior design was super nice, only to realize that five years later, it looked super, super dated. Having a trendy design sometimes just doesn't age super well. We change, us as people, we change so much over the course of a year or two or three and our style evolves. It really wasn't too long ago when I was hyper obsessed with like pipe furniture and the industrial look and I actually had a furniture business where I used to build like pipe coffee tables and stuff and I was obsessed with it and now I just hate it but it's just because my design palette has shifted. This is something that I think people are very short-sighted about whenever they're super enamored and infatuated with the idea of a shipping container home. Here's something that people don't really realize when they're getting into this game and it's that counties and building and safety departments, they're a little outdated and they're often playing catch up with a lot of these non-conventional builds like tiny houses, tree houses, prefabs, and container homes. They just don't always understand your vision. Boop. <laughs> the concept of a container home can be so clear to you, but if you call old Bob behind the desk at the county, he's gonna be like, a container, what? And you really have to explain to him that it's a container home. Like, yes, those containers that travel across the sea holding foreign goods or some yeah, you're gonna convert that into this super trendy, amazing, awesome architectural house. And they're gonna be like, uh, yeah, we don't do that here. So you really have to know how to frame up your questions whenever going to the city. Instead of saying, hey, I wanna build a container home, you might wanna say something like, hey, I'm looking to build a home that's a steel frame construction. Then at least you're talking in the lexicon and the verbiage that they're used to dealing with every single day. Something else to consider on this front is that container homes can often be classified as something that's called a prototype design, meaning it's like a spec home or the first of its kind. And a lot of counties will actually make you compensate and over-engineer your house because it just doesn't conform to traditional building materials in the same way. One final thing that I wanna to touch on here is that a lot of the times a typical building and safety inspector is not actually qualified to inspect your container home because it has so many specialty niches and trades in it, like a welder, for example. All right, so these next couple of points all sort of relate to each other. So let's just say that you're willing to face the county and you're like, come at me, bro. Well, now you gotta hire an architect or a draftsman. The problem is that a lot of drafters and architects will turn you down because they don't wanna to touch a shipping container home because it's too unconventional, they don't understand it, they don't understand the structural loads, and they just don't want the liability and the headache of messing with container homes. To this day, I still have not worked with a drafter or an architect that was super passionate about building a container home for me. But let's just say that you find that golden goose architect and they're like, Robert, I'm gonna build you the most perfect container home ever. I think that was French and Spanish at the same time. Anyways, let's just say that you have an architect that's willing to do the job for you. Well, next you need to get it engineered and often over-engineered. And guess what? 
short group of people also don't want to work with containers. Engineers. In my experience, it's been very difficult to find an engineer that will stamp my container plans. Now I know that a lot of y'all are probably thinking, well, it's a shipping container. They're literally engineered to withstand a bunch of weight. On cargo ships, they literally stack them up 10 high and load hundreds of thousands of pounds on top of each other. And that is true. Containers are engineered to structurally support a lot of weight, kind of. That assumes that you're not making a bunch of different cuts within that container. See, containers get their structural rigidity. <laughs> rigid, I'm, I've done this too many times. Structural rigid, rigidity, rigid, rigidity. Oh my goodness. Am I saying that right? Why? What time is it? Oh, it's 12.39, that's why. Containers get their structural rigidity from being one fluid piece of steel that's all welded together and all engineered as one piece. But the moment you make a cut for like a window or a door or like a body disposal, anything like that, you take away from the structural integrity of that container. Now you have to overcompensate and re-engineer that structure with different steel beams and steel supports so that it I don't even know what I'm talking about. Like I just, I've literally, I, bl <laughs> I blanked out the last like three minutes. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if like any of this makes sense. You have to overcompensate and re-engineer the structure with new steel supports and beams so that it's structurally sound to support the weight of the house that you're building. All to say that it's usually a horde pass for engineers. And last one here, let's say you have your architect, you have your engineer. Now you need someone to actually build it, your contractor. And guess what? A lot of contractors won't touch container homes. A lot of contractors that I've approached or talked to, they just don't want to do it. They don't want to deal with the container home. They know that it's hard. It's outside of their wheelhouse. They're used to building houses with two by fours and two by sixes. So to bring this like wacky container home, it's often difficult for them to see your vision. And in this market where most contractors are booked out anywhere from six to 24 months in advance, they just know that they don't have to deal with this headache of a container home when they can just have all these other dozens of jobs that are just regular homes that they're very good at building and remodeling. Okay, so here's probably the single biggest misconception and mistake that people make when getting into the shipping container game. And the misconception is that people just think it's cheap. Like they genuinely think, oh, well, a container is gonna cost me like 4,000 bucks and another 4,000 bucks and a couple of shiplap panels and some laminate tile and I got a beautiful shipping container. Well, no, that's not true. If your shipping container home is cheap, it's probably ugly. I've just triggered like half of my audience, I think. Container homes, very often they can be more expensive than building a regular stick built house. There's so many things that make containers a very costly endeavor. For example, the different trades that you have to hire to work inside of a container. One of those trades being a welder. A specialty welder that can actually work on a container home can charge you anywhere from 125 to 150 an hour. On top of that, remember all that over engineering I was talking about? Well, if you're having to put in steel supports, or steel beams in your container, like let's say that you wanna combine two containers and you wanna cut out a wall on both and connect them, you're gonna need a very long beam to connect both of those things. That's expensive. Steel is one of the most expensive materials to deal with right now, especially in the era of COVID where supply chains are just like, see ya, goodbye, I'm dead now. Another reason that it's so expensive is that you can't just put in fiberglass insulation. You need to do specialty spray foam insulation, which is not particularly cheap. So in general, I think this is where most people mess up. I did whenever I was first budgeting out my very first shipping container home, which could have cost me anywhere from 120 to $160,000, which I didn't have at the time. And yeah, very much dodged a bullet on that. So I guess my recommendation here is that if you're dead set on building a container home, make sure to get different quotes from contractors. Like the rule of threes here, right? Get three different contracting quotes and try to work with a contractor who's actually built a container home before. Because if they've never built a container home before, then there's just so much that that they don't know. And ultimately I think that's gonna lead to some budget overages, which is never fun. It's 1 a.m. and I'm so tired. Ready for this? Yes, I'm ready. What are you stalling for? I'm not stalling for nothing. Watch this, spin it a pen. Oh, pretty cool. Focus, Rob. So getting through construction, once you get through construction, congratulations, you've built a container home. It's very difficult and you should be proud of yourself. It's an accomplishment in and of itself that you were able to complete a container home. One thing that I think should be up for consideration is resell. Like you built this house for yourself, but if you ever wanna sell it so that you can use the proceeds to get into your next home, you may not have an easy time finding a buyer. 
Remember, container homes are somewhat trendy. So let's say that you live in this house and you like it, and in 10 years you decide to sell it. Well, not only may it be out of trend and out of style, and maybe you won't like it as much, but that probably will apply to the rest of the population too. And you just may not be able to offload your container home at the price that you're wanting to sell it for. This actually goes into my next point here, which is appraisals. Let's like, let's say you do find the buyer and that buyer's like, you son of a bitch, I'm in. You still need to be able to appraise, meaning that if you're selling it for $400,000, you need an appraisal to agree that it's worth $400,000 because if they don't, you're gonna have issues with financing and either you or that buyer is gonna have to pay for that gap. On top of that, you really have to consider how appraisals work. Typically, an appraiser's going out and trying to determine the value of your home based on other homes that are similar, like in square footage, in building materials. And so if you have this one of a kind architectural shipping container, it's gonna be hard for them to determine the value of that container based on other homes that have been sold within the last 90 to 180 days. On top of that, this is assuming that the buyer that you're selling it to can even get financing in place to finance something as unconventional as a container home. And even just diving into financing a little bit more, you may not even find a bank that will give you a construction loan on a container home because it's so wacky in a bank size. So you may very well have to pay cash to buy a container home or pay cash to build a container home. Financing and appraisals are such a fickle fickle beast in general, but add the complicated layer of a shipping container and it gets crazy. Which I'd be more like enthusiastic and animated if it wasn't like one something. I was gonna redo that take, but honestly, I don't remember what I said. So let's move on. Okay, last little consideration here is that sizing limitations. Typically, shipping containers are eight feet across, eight feet tall. There are what are called high cubes that are a little bit taller. I think they're about nine feet. But, you know, conceptually, like the look of a container, it's very cool, it's very modern, it's got a striking look to it, and conceptually, they're great. But whenever you're actually in the space, eight feet across is like not very much. And when you start talking about putting in studs and insulation and everything like that, and cutting inches into your space, that can actually be pretty significant given that you only have eight feet across. So just like looking at this room right here, let me see. This room is 16 feet across, meaning two containers can fit in here, meaning one container is about from here to that wall right there, which might seem kind of spacious because this is like a wide angle lens, but maybe it doesn't. Like if I had to live in a space that was from here to that wall, I would set I would set my house on fire because I'd be so frustrated at living in such a crammed space. And I get it. I get it if that's your prerogative. And if you like the tiny house living mentality and like the idea of a shipping container, you might be fine with the narrow space, but it can feel a little claustrophobic and you might think that you're ready for it, but I don't know. Once you're in there, it might drive you a little crazy. Now that I've given my personal POV on container homes, I wanted to talk to my friend Kai Andrew, who's a shipping container home expert because he's actually built one before and he's building a couple right now. Cool, so we'll do a cold open here. Like, hey, what's up, man? As if we didn't plan this. Hey, what's oh, up? Oh, really? Oh. <laughs> let's do it again, let's do it again. Hey, what's up, man? Long time no talk. I know, man, it's been a while. Well, let's jump right in, man. Building a shipping container, pretty easy, right? No. Not at all. You'd think it would be, and you'd think it'd be cheap too, but I think it's uh, becoming further and further from the truth. Since this isn't like your first time around the block, can you give us like three or so misconceptions or things to keep in mind when building a shipping container? So the first one is that it's cheaper and it's not. If you were doing something completely off grid and you're doing it yourself with a, a cutting wheel and you were just doing it on your own without code engineering or anything, yeah, it could be cheaper. Right now it's post, you know, illness levels and so everything's weird. I think containers now are like twenty or thirty thousand dollars just for a normal forty footer one way. Whoa, twenty or thirty thousand dollars? It used to be like eight, right? No, it used to be three and a half. So when I was first looking buying containers, they're about two and a half, three and a half thousand. Maybe a brand spanking new one that was perfect condition was four thousand. I paid five and a half for mine. It's not that inexpensive just because you have to work with metal. But metal is just really expensive because you have to customize it and then steel is not cheap. So the other one is you don't know what you don't know because it's not a standard building project. It's not like, everybody's been doing basically building out of wood for uh, ages. Metal is relatively new. And so when you need to connect a deck 
or you need to brace a, a beam or something like that, you're all of a sudden dealing with a lot of metal and metal calculations. I can't just go to Home Depot. I'm like, hey, can I get a eight inch by four inch beam delivered to my place tomorrow? It's like, no, that doesn't, it doesn't work that way. And then the other one too that um, a lot of people don't get right, and I've seen this on YouTube. So if you guys are looking at doing it, um, hopefully I'm not talking anybody out of it because I love shipping containers. I just want people to be informed because you know, the three times that I've like gone down the rabbit hole of almost building a, a shipping container, had those projects actually gone through, I would have been so in over my head and probably would have made some very, very costly mistakes. <laughs> Nah, you you would have figured it out. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I really do think that you would have figured it out. It's kind of like one of those situations. You, you figured out your own um, ADU in your backyard in the LA. But yeah, going back to it though, the last thing is that most people don't get this right is they don't seal the containers correctly. And so if you think about it, they're a giant metal box. And you guys ever had like, you know, a glass of water like this on a hot day and it's cold on the inside, you get condensation on the, on the outside. And that's what happens in containers. If you guys wanna check it out, just go into any storage container or any construction site container inside there'll be droplets literally dropping down on stuff we always have to cover our stuff on the inside because the, um, um, the condensation will drop down on our lumber and our, our tools so we always had to cover it with tarps and stuff you know prefabs tiny home shipping containers they're awesome but you know the the marketing behind all of this stuff is really good and so it makes anyone feel like they can do it which they can but there's some due diligence needed I think 100% I, I think a, a lot of folks they get into it and they don't realize how much work and how much money it's gonna take because we see I've seen the shipping containers that we built this for nine thousand dollars we've seen the tiny homes like we built this uh a frame for three thousand dollars or 274 dollars and you're like what are you doing most of the time they're not doing it completely legally that's where it starts getting really expensive like whenever you talk about actually having to put in like the foundation get it inspected plumb it correctly do the electrical by code it starts adding i mean it's effectively a house except a lot of the times it's a lot more expensive. Yeah, I mean, like just to give you some insight of mine, I, I originally budgeted this. I started this about two years ago, the one that the project that I'm working on right now, it was supposed to be about $75,000. I'm about 60, 70% done and I'm at $129,000. So for somebody who's first starting off, just make sure that you have a budget um, and you have a contingency plan in there. For those of you at home, just make sure that you have a budget and then you have double that budget. All right, man, you wanna tell everyone to like and subscribe before we Hit it. Yeah, go check out my channel, Kai Andrew. You guys have probably seen my videos pop up next to Rob Built's videos on the little suggestion bar. Come check me out. I talk about shipping containers, financial freedom, independence, and real estate. Well, I meant tell everyone to like and subscribe to this channel, but that also- Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So ultimately I wanna leave you with this. This is in no way me saying don't go out and build a container home. This is really just me coming and speaking my heart because I've been infatuated with container homes time and time again. And I've just learned a lot of these different mistakes and lessons along the way. Ultimately, if you wanna build a container home, I fully support you. Do it for you. Understand some of the risks that I've outlined for you. Understand some of those budgetary considerations too. Can you build a container home cheaply? Yeah, I mean, sure. If it's not permitted and you just wanna throw it together, is it gonna be nice? Yeah, probably not. And maybe that's not your goal, care, or desire. This always brings me back to the same question. Is it worth it? Maybe. I mean, I will say that I have a unique fascination with container homes, especially because I do love how unique they are. And me as an Airbnb operator and entrepreneur, my wheels start turning because I just see so much potential on how I can transform a space like that. Plus, I think that container homes are super marketable and they just do super well on Airbnb. So have I given up completely on container homes? I don't know. I still kind of want to build one. What do y'all think? Should I build a container home? Should I build the ultimate container home Airbnb? Like legitimately, if enough of y'all wanted that, I would do it. Cause like it's challenging and I'm like always down for a challenge. So I don't know. I might build a container home. Like I might do it. I might, but also I might not. <laughs>